Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Tatiana Show. This is a very special edition because I have one of my, well, pretty much my favorite person. I, I You know, that's it's a pretty high, high standard, but one of my top five favorite people in the absolute world yes. is Pamela Morgan, and I'm so excited that she's here with us today on The Tatiana Show. Josh, aren't you excited? Welcome to the super show, Pam. Super excited. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I can't wait to chat with you about my favorite subject and yours, obviously. Death. Uh, oh death my God. Crypto. That's that's what everyone wow. was thinking, right? Yes, that's what they're thinking. So I, I tell Pam, I, I mean I tell everybody about Pam because I think that Pam is great with thinking about how the legal system could be disrupted with cryptocurrency and kind of communicating that. I think it's really, really exciting. And it's not all about the smart contract or any of that stuff. I, I, I've always been really inspired by your your thought leadership in the space. But with this book, you did something that I think was a little bit more practical. Um, the book that we're talking about, guys, is Crypto Inheritance Planning. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, Pamela's simple guide for owners of cryptocurrency. So if you guys have crypto, nobody wants to think about being dead because we're all waiting for, you know, when, it, you know, when moon and whatever, but like in case you don't make it to the moon, you might want to allow your parents to buy that Lambo in your honor after you're dead. And you're not going to know how to do that unless you have this book. Seriously. I started reading it and, um, you know, Pam is my good friend and she's like, Tanya, did you read the book? And I said, no, because I am a truthful person and a lazy bum. So I, I tried to cram it in before the show today. And I got to say, it's really, really well written. And I wasn't like surprised by that. But every time I read anything by Pam, it really takes the scariness out of what is a pretty crappy topic. And all you need, apparently, is some pieces of paper a pen, and some envelopes in order to get started. Um, so I got to that part of the book and I'm gonna get to the other parts. But why, what, 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 what prompted this? I mean, it's a pretty morbid topic. Well, you know, I, maybe it's morbid, maybe it's not. It really depends on, on your perspective. So how this book came about was through my work with Third Key Solutions, helping people and companies who have Bitcoin, Ether, lots of other cryptocurrencies and crypto assets. And in helping them build their businesses and do it more securely with multisig, I started asking annoying lawyer questions like, hey, if you have a bunch of crypto assets, can your family access them? And of course, the answer is like, hell no, we keep my I keep my private keys private. What are you talking about? Right. And and that's fine. You know, it's your choice. That's one of the things you know we love about Bitcoin is that this is your choice. But if you have a fan, if, if you have a family, if you have people who depend on you financially, if you want to have other people in your life or maybe charities that you like to support or political causes that you like to support, if you want them to be able to take advantage of, of your Bitcoin or your other crypto assets, you have to do something. If you do nothing, pretty sure that your assets will not go where you want them to go if they end up anywhere at all. So that's why I wrote this book. I wrote this book because we were getting so many requests from people. Hey, can you help us? Hey, can we hire you? And we simply don't scale. I can't possibly help everyone who needs help. And so this book is basically like you and I sitting down. It's basically like you hiring Third Key Solutions to help you directly and saying, okay, these are the questions that I would ask you if you hired me. It's, oh, so many questions. So where, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, so, wait, wait, wait. So, Pam, you did some, you did some like uh, interesting research about it too, right? And you, you asked people what were their main reasons why they didn't do it, and then also it looks like fifty percent of people didn't have any kind of crypto inheritance plan. Yeah, and didn't so that guy just die? Like there was like a just a situation. We were talking about this earlier. Um, Matthew Mellon, he passed away and uh, over $500,000 worth of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency went with him. I mean, that's pretty sizable, but there were misconceptions around that. So I, I want to give you the opportunity to show them. Yeah, I mean, so so the bottom line is, if you don't make a plan, your family or your loved ones won't be able to inherit. And unfortunately for us, um, we don't get to decide, uh, generally speaking, when we go. 
Um, so the thing is, is it's, it sounds really, really scary. Um, most people think that in order to create a, a, a plan, you have to like give your keys to a third party or you have to do something that's like super elaborate and hire a lawyer and do all these other things. And the reality is you don't actually have to do any of that. You can get started with inheritance planning in a matter of, you know, one hour. You sit down, you, you write a letter to your loved ones. Is it going to be perfect? No, nothing in life is, right? But is it going to be a lot better than leaving nothing? Yes. And then once you start with that letter, you can make it better. And part of the book involves like you start with writing the letter and then you evaluate each section and make parts better as you see fit, as you have time. Um, but, you know, I think the idea of, you know, Matthew Mellon kind of scared everyone because then they realize that like all of this cryptocurrency is potentially, you know, locked forever. Um, and maybe that's not what he wanted. Most yeah. people, I don't think, that? want that. It was 500 yeah. grand worth. No, I think it was 500 million. Yeah, I think it was 500 million. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My <laughs> recording It was half a, half a billion, half a billion. dollars, folks. Why, God. really? And the, family, and the family can't get to it. The 500 family, grand doesn't sound that bad. 500 million? Million. Yeah, it's that's why it was okay. all over the news. Yeah, because I was like, 500 grand, that sounds like a lot of money. But, you know, it's not the same thing at all. Jesus no, yeah. Christ. At all. Well, and this is why the family and, and everyone else is freaking out, right? Because this, 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 that amount of money changes multiple people's lives. That's generational yeah. wealth. That's intergenerational wealth, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so then the question becomes, you know, who can help them, if anyone? And what does that look like? And, you know, wow. right now, I think they found that no one can can help them. No one's successful yet. And that comes in part because we know we don't want to give our private keys to anyone. You know, we get this chicken and egg problem where we need to keep our private keys private now, but we also need to make sure that people can access the access them later. And so then the question is like a security versus risk versus access analysis. And so in the book, I do something called a sure analysis which S-U-R-E, um, sure, which is security, usability, resilience, and efficiency. And so those are kind of the, the, the areas where we look at your plan. And obviously we want it to be secure first, but not security at the, at the expense of all of the other things there, because your plan has to be usable and not by you. There's a spoiler alert, right? Often when we write these plans, you know, we have all this knowledge of cryptocurrency. We know how we're holding our keys. And so there are these underlying assumptions. We don't realize that people don't have the same knowledge that we do. And so when people mm -hmm. try to write it down for their heirs, it becomes, you know, kind of gibberish to their heirs because they have no idea what they're actually saying because they don't know what a private yeah. key is. You know, no, yeah, they don't know what a yeah. hardware wallet is. They don't even know how to plug it in. And so then the worst case scenario is what do they do? Like they don't yeah. just sit there. What do they do? Right. They go to the local meetup group. They go to Reddit. <laughs> they go yeah. to Facebook. And, and they, they find a bunch of weirdos. Yes. Yeah, and right. they find, and who's there to help them, right? Who's the greeting yeah. committee then? You know, yeah. and so we, we, if you want to protect your heirs, like this, the simplest, easiest thing you can do is to identify a few people or a few organizations, ideally people who don't know each other, who can mm. help your heirs. Yeah. The yeah. Heirs. What's up with that? What's what's the deal with that? You know, because how do you pick out these people? And then also, what about where are you putting all your keys and stuff like that? Because you have to pick some secure, trusted people. I don't know. Trusted people change from from what if they also get wiped out in the in the Holocaust or whatever it is that's coming for us. I mean, that's so so yeah. So this is the issue. So um, you know, in the book, I, I don't advocate for people to give their trusted people copies of their keys. This is something that is very personal. Estate planning is super super personal, and it's one of the most difficult things because I want you to take a minute and think about your family. Okay, now think about your extended family. Now think about your extended, extended family. You definitely have at least one crazy person in there. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Christmas is all about the crazies. 
Exactly. And so when you start getting families involved and when you start getting people who maybe don't necessarily think like you involved, and then you add that to grief and greed, we end up with this mixture that is dangerous, right? And I think, Tatiana, you brought up a really, really important point, which is relationships and people change over time. And so estate planning is not a do it once and forget it. It's an ongoing process and it doesn't have to be like this terrible thing like, oh no, I have to do my estate planning. It can be something super simple and super fun if you start to think of it like, hey, Mm. this is me giving an amazing gift to my loved ones. This is me giving an amazing gift to this political cause that I know is struggling, that I really want to support. Like, I want my name on that. I want to make a difference in this world, right? And there are so many, if you start to view it like that, then it doesn't become this like horribly sad and depressing thing, which, yeah. you know, I feel great like that's point. a, yeah. Great, sorry, but great point. It, it is really, really difficult to get people to jump that loop. And and it is nice when you think, wow, what what? imagine how happy they'll be um, you know, not happy because you're dead, but imagine, <laughs> <I'm gone. laughs> uh, but uh, no, but imagine the lives you can change. That's the better yes. way to put it. And and that's a great way to look at it because through all the misery and awfulness, um, you can actually make a difference. And also, you know, we're all still kind of early adopters, right? We're all still taking a chance and, you know, December run up aside, Um, All of us, I think, have been asked by our friends and family, like, oh, you're into that Bitcoin thing or like that cryptocurrency thing? Oh, you know, and they start asking you about all of the negative stuff that they hear on the news and whatever. And wouldn't it be nice to to show them, to let them take advantage of your of your forethought, of of your Mm. risk? Because right now we're all taking a risk. Right. And Mm. hopefully Mm. there will be something, you know, left for them later. Um, you know, Tatiana, yeah. you asked me earlier if I did research. So I did this Twitter poll and I wanted to find out what people's plans were. And so there were four options for people to vote. One of them was, um, you know, I've got a, a technical plan. One of them says I have a legal plan. One of them is um, I've got a technical and legal plan. And then the last one is I'm planning to live forever immortality. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on, you know, science, um, <laughs> more than 55% of people were going with the immortality plan, which, you know, I'm just saying, um, even if you do think you're gonna live forever, a plan can't hurt. Like yeah. you've got nothing but time. So you have the, you have, you're not wasting any time if you're planning to live forever. So you <laughs> might as well write a plan. Yeah, I mean, this, this society in general has this aversion to death, which is which is understandable. But uh, for instance, in Shakespeare's time, and everyone's seen the pictures of the skulls on the desk. It was quite normal to have a skull, a human skull, on your desk to remind you every day that hey, uh, you know, li- seize the day because death is coming, whether you want it or not. And you might want to live forever, but the scientific fact is, even if they can, uh, you know, keep your life from the head uh, up. Or something like that, you could uh, get hit by a truck or something. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 really really important. And and I think nowadays, like you know, I, I turned on. Uh, I, was, I don't know. Somehow the the there was a song, a children's song, popped into my head. Me, and my girlfriend was singing it. Um, there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why. I guess she'll die. And and but the new versions left out. I guess she'll die because they like. They wanted to protect really? these kids from the concept of death. And, and more and more in society, we're being so shielded from the concept of death that we refuse to, to think about it. And it, it is, when it comes to private keys and stuff like that, it's super important. Well, it's, it's absolutely important because if you don't do anything, either your Bitcoin are going to be locked away you know, forever until the cryptography is broken hundreds of years in the future and some bot gets it, or you're going to have some scumbag who's gets involved with your family. I mean, you might get lucky and get someone who's good, but statistically speaking, I feel like <laughs> you're more likely to get someone who is, who's like, Oh yeah, I can totally help you. Um, and, and then, you know, you might have someone who's on the up and up ish, 
who's like, oh yeah, I can help you get that Bitcoin. But if you've been holding like since before the splits, maybe they'll help your family get your BTC, yeah. but will they then pocket your BCH and all of no, the other man. forks and all of that kind of stuff, right? So, you know, you, and they don't know any better. They don't know any mm. better and they're not gonna learn. Like they're not gonna say, yes, my loved one is gone. Now is the time for me to learn all about Bitcoin. That's that yeah. doesn't really happen. their honor. Their honor. So, Pam, have you? I know that you're always going around and you're doing these different kinds of trainings, and it seems like what you're doing is a lot more practical. Are you only going through what you're doing with this book? Because you've run, written a lot of different pieces, um, also about security. You've you've written some great guides with that. So. What are you focusing on? Because I know that you're doing a lot of talks. We just hung out together in Chicago. I just had Hannah on uh, a couple of days oh, ago. Great. So that was cool. Yeah. Uh, so we were happy. To, I've been talking on the Tatiana show about that really cool event. But are you talking about this? Are you talking about, you know, other stuff? Like, what are you working on beyond this book? Because this is just one of your 50 things that you do. Yeah. So um, I, I, right lately, I've been spending a lot of time educating lawyers. So I do these legal workshops around the world where I bring in lawyers and I teach them what they need to know about the technology. I am unlike most of the other trainers in the industry um, because A, I actually use cryptocurrency, which I know is shocking, uh, but I that is apparently not a prerequisite to teach um, a class about Bitcoin. Uh, I, was, I was shocked Weird. to learn. Yeah, I know. I, okay. <laughs> So I'll tell you the story really quick. Um, so I, you need continuing legal education in, in some states in oh, order yeah. to maintain your license, which is great. I think it's great. Um, so I needed some, some CLE and I decided to, I saw this, this, I got this email that said Bitcoin and taxes in the U S and I was like, Oh, cool. Like, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about taxes. Um, for me, that's the morbid thing, right? Like I'll talk about death <laughs> all day, but taxes, <laughs> no, um, don't want to talk about that. So I was like, all right, you know, maybe this will be super informative. So I paid the money and I, and I made myself available and I like cleared my calendar and sat down and started watching this show. And this guy mm, was not that great. How do I say this nicely? So he goes through the uh, whole hour of PowerPoint slides. And at the very end, he asked, and, and while he was while he was talking, it became painfully obvious to me that he had mm. never done a Bitcoin transaction. Like it, oh the way God. that he was speaking about it. Really? it, it you, yeah, you would have known. So I asked in the questions i was like yeah. have you ever do you own any cryptocurrency yeah. do you own any bitcoin have you ever done a bitcoin transaction because the name of this class is called bitcoin and taxes and yeah. he looked sheepishly into the camera and smiled oh and God. said oh i i was hoping no one would ask me this no <sighs> i i've never done a transaction and i was like <sighs> how how do you hold yourself out as an expert when you literally have zero experience like well I, this is like part happened. for the course in the industry right uh, i mean, I mean a million experts with no experience whatsoever it's, it's maddening so um i've been doing a lot of education of lawyers and so what i do in in my workshops is i don't teach them the law because they're lawyers they they can <laughs> they know how to research the law i teach them you know what is utxo what what how what is how does a Coinbase transaction work? How do you actually use a block explorer? Um, what is a fork? And we go through um, the DAO and we talk about um, it in terms of what I believe it to be, which is the first smart contract bankruptcy. And wow. what does that look like? And how does a fork happen? And what is consensus? And and how can you tell the bullshit projects from the projects that actually matter? You know, what mm. are the tools that you need? To, what are the wow. questions that you need to ask to be able to understand whether or not this is just like a slow, expensive database that someone's um, forwarding <laughs> for their own gain or I whether it's class. actually to be a lawyer? No, you, don't, you, you actually don't have to be a lawyer. I've had um, I've had uh, coders take it. I've had lots of other people. A lot of times, though, it's geared towards law students and lawyers. And the reason, honestly, is because 
lawyers tend to not want to ask questions if there are other people there. It's like an ego thing. Wow. Um, yeah. And so, you know, like sometimes when you're a professional, you, you want to ask questions, but you don't want to appear. Want to look stupid. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah. I market it specifically to lawyers and then explain to them that no one actually knows what's happening. Um, so what we can understand is the technology and we can understand where we are in the experimentation phase. But there is no like, I, I mean, unless your client is clearly doing money transmission or something like that, but that's not, you know, that's not even mildly interesting in my opinion. Um, so, you know, the nuances, the, the gray areas, the places where, you know, what is consensus and, and what does proof of stake mean and what it was delegated proof of stake and how does that work? And, you know, all of these sorts of things, we talk about all of that and more. So it's really fun. I love it. And it also gives me um, uh, uh, connections so that I can refer people because again, like I can't keep up with the work. So I like to try to refer work out to people who, un who actually understand the technology. Yeah. Wow. Super important. Yeah. There, there, there really is, there is so many people that stand up as experts and then don't really know. I just, just rem your story reminded me of one. I was at this central bank, uh, here in Germany, the German central bank and, uh, which is not, it's like the Bundesbank. It's not really because there's a European central. Anyway, and he, this, the head was, the head of this uh, central bank, the Bundesbank, was giving a big talk about Bitcoin and the terrible thing that it is and how awful uh, it and all the destruction that it'll cause and this and that. And I did the same. The, I started thinking, you haven't used this, have you? Like, as I was sitting there watching it, I bet you haven't ever used. So I did the same thing. I got up and said, "Excuse me, have you ever uh, used Bitcoin? Have you ever?" Uh, uh, same thing. Sheepishly looked around and sort of said, "Well, uh, uh, no. I, you know, I've, I've read all about it. I, I don't think I need to use it. <laughs> I've read all about it, and uh, I know, I know. You know, I'm, it's I'm like an a expert. teenager who's never had sex. He was like, don't worry, I got this. Like, I've read all yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, he moved like this, and." <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you know, just shocking, just yeah. terrible. And then I, I said, look, afterwards, come and see me. I'll right. show you how to use it. We'll do a little transaction. And he was like, oh, that, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Like, what? Like, you know what? We can't be so mean to some of these people. That nerdy guy, yes, he should have done his thing. But it's nice that you showed him. I hope you did show him, even though oh. he's a poser and he's talking crap on my coin. Um <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. all right. I know that. So Pam doesn't normally get involved with like ICO stuff. And I'm just curious, like when you're teaching people about cryptocurrency, I think that there's a great place for ICOs in terms of like as a tech and stuff, but it's so sketchy in the US. How do people navigate that if they are attorneys? Because there's a lot of opinions, but from what I understand, nobody's opinion is really accurate. Um, because there's such a lack of clarity. So when people are sort of diving into that, how do they even get involved in that? I mean, it seems very uh, reckless to give people advice when you don't know. Well, um, so... Do you want to give a diplomatic answer? I'm sorry, one. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, I'm just I mean, so, wondering, no, no, you know? I'm, I'm happy to tell you what I think. Um, so one of the things that people don't like about the law is that it's mushy right? Often there are not very clear rules, right? Even a rule like you can't kill someone has caveats, right? You mm -hmm. can in self-defense, you can to protect the lives of, you know, 15 other people when there is no alter, right? So, so even with the clearest rules, the facts matter. So that's one of the reasons why giving advice with ICOs and, and new technology is it seems so mushy. It's because the rules aren't meant to say, check, 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 yes, right? Mm -hmm. We can easily do a check, 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 yes. If what yeah. you're doing is a security, meaning if you weren't doing it in crypto, it would be a security and it would fall under the regular rules. You can't just, you can't just wrap your project up in crypto and then like make it's not a shield of invisibility, right? It doesn't protect you from the regulators by wrapping it in crypto. So, you know, that that again, um, most lawyers 
will just avoid that altogether, right? If what you really want to do is equity and you want to do everything that looks like an IPO, except none of the due diligence and none of the, if you don't actually want to have any sort of tangible product, but you really just want to get a bunch of money from a bunch of people to maybe build something at some point, then like that's kind of a bullshit project anyway, which is what the majority of ICOs are right now, right? And people are buying into them because they have FOMO, right? They have fear of missing out. And they feel like, you know, there's this opportunity where, you know, for once they're not prohibited in the US from, from buying these things, even though technically they are, right? Legally they are, but from a technical viewpoint, they're not, they can just buy in. Um, and so we have this, I don't know, I think we have this big um, untapped need in the US. So there are all of these people who have been excluded from participating in, in startups, right? In order for you to participate, in order for you to buy equity in a startup in the US, typically you have to be an accredited investor. And what that million means in English plus. is, what? Like a million it's, bucks plus, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to have a ton of money. And so it's this um, rich people's only game. And, and middle class, and you know the middle class are pissed they're sick of it and they're like watching the rich get richer and they're and they're specifically excluded and they're like wait a minute why am i excluded you know why do i have to prove that i have a million dollars why does that make me smarter or better right because and they so might lose their money well, they yes. also lose their money in gambling. They lose it at the casino. They lose it at the lottery. That's okay. But when they have an investment opportunity where they can actually gauge whether or not a company like has a success rate, that's when they stop them. It's a, it's really far, far too logical. Far yeah. too but logical even to but even <laughs> if they do everything on the up and up, even if they do register, the majority of startups fail. Yeah. In other words, there's no guarantee simply by registration or simply by having this paperwork that you're actually going to get a return on investment. And venture capitalists mm. know this and angel investors know this. You know, anyone who plays in the entrepreneurial space knows that startups are risky, right? And so to try to hold coin, you know, coin projects or ICOs to a different standard, I, I think it's kind of bullshit. Um, that said, when you can go on Fiverr and get someone to write your white paper, um for your eyes no oh don't do it because it's gonna break your heart Wait, it's can gonna you hurt see your it? eyes is there? oh go on fiverr you'll see they there are there's a whole page of people who are offering to write your white paper i've been solicited no Holy fewer than seven moly. times to have this is the solicitation that comes no fewer than seven times um they have said hi i see that you're a lawyer we want to pay you to write our white paper for us and I'm like, but but they basically have no project, right? All they want, they want a lawyer to write their white paper um, so that they can raise a bunch of money on you know a project. The thing about ICOs is that we, because we, the collective we, have been protected by the federal government for so long in the United States, right? We're like, oh, we'll protect you. We're only going to offer you nice, trusted investments. People don't know how to evaluate. People don't no. know that when all there is is a white paper and like questionable founders and they actually haven't done anything that you probably shouldn't invest, right? They yeah. think that this is early days. They think it's okay. And that makes me sad. But the, but the solution to that is not regulation. The solution to that is not protecting people. The solution to that is teaching people. What does it mean to have a good investment? What does risk mean? What does reward mean? And at least in the US, we are... I would argue intentionally financially illiterate. Most well, people that I know are not educated in any way in finance. Yeah, and that's the saddest part because that's the true regulatory framework that should be enforced is yes. education, financial yes. education. Because yeah, but not everybody can be educated. Now, come on now, let's be yeah, realistic. But, not everybody's and not everybody literally has the capacity, but you can have uh, independent organizations that verify that you can offsource it to not like government regulatory bodies because they're just going to do a racket. I'm yeah, just saying you know like, I, Sometimes... can't, I can't gauge if a project is a real project and like I'm yeah, in but... crypto. That's yeah, hard. Surely, I, I don't think people should some have of the to best do it. Some of the best way to learn is to get actually wrecked. <laughs> you know, to, to invest <laughs> I don't in think that that's, ridiculous... I don't think that that's a good advice for everybody. Just like go yeah. out there and like learn it or get like your financial no, ruin. I, I don't I'm think that that's saying, the solution. I'm... But 
Yeah, but at this, at this protection, what I'm saying is the state constantly trying to protect you stops you oh, from sure. sometimes getting hurt. And sometimes mm. to learn, you need to get hurt. A kid needs to sometimes touch a flame to actually feel what the heck that why the parents are saying don't touch it. Well, That's and I think just, that I think you're you're spot on. And I think that when the state protects us for so long and we trust it. That's when this ICO thing happens, right? It's specifically happening because people haven't learned. And to get to your point, Tatiana, I know that you say that you think that you can't learn like all of these things, but I would argue that A, you absolutely can, and B, you have a unique position because you are trying to learn about every single crypto thing that's happening out there. An investor is not going to try to learn or they shouldn't try to learn the ins and outs of every single thing that's available, right? That that's not what we do with stocks. You know, a, a stock investor doesn't do diligent research on every single company in the S&P 500. That's ridiculous. Nobody can even keep up with that, right? Yeah. So 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 I think we should look at like how people actually invest and 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 what financial education actually means. Like yeah, on its face it's terrifying. And I know I can't keep up with all the projects that are happening. But I don't feel like that prevents me from making good decisions on like what what projects that I I feel are valuable or what projects I feel like have promise. Maybe I'm way off. No, I think I think that makes sense. I just think that to assume that people are going to do their due diligence while I would not offer the state, um, you know, babysitting as a solution, I just don't think that I would 100% count on people uh, to to do that research. I just think people are necessarily going to. But yeah, maybe they need to get their, their butt handed to them and then they'll, they'll learn. But, but um, or maybe there's even... other organizations that can kind of filter that out, right? Okay, well, I may not be a financial, you know, genius or like somebody with like a like business background, like, you know, I don't know, some fancy school, but then maybe I hire some people and I and I take the picks that they like. And then that's and that that's the workaround, like outsourcing some of that due diligence somehow. I don't know. Yeah. And, and not only that, I mean, the thing is, if, if your friend, something really terrible happens to them and they learned, usually they'll come and tell you, hey, watch out for this, this and this. Yeah. Uh, and and this is, you know, and we do live in the information age right now where we, we're able to broadcast. Oh, my God, this is what happened to me. Hey, guess what? Next time I'm going to look at the GitHub and show people, hey, how do you read a GitHub if you're not a programmer? And just to see how much code is going to this project. Is there actually a project or is it just a big marketing hype? You know, so these these things are all there. We're in the information age. There's no more excuses. Yeah, I love that. I like it. Very good. So Pam, where can Wait, we see so you? Wait, you what? You can, I was just going to ask, Josh, does that mean that you're going to be offering that service? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're uh, yeah, we want to do a little show that where we talk about, um, you know, how to read uh, GitHub and these sort of things. I think they're, they're important. Yeah, for sure. I and we, we're, we're trying to add more education into our platform. Great. Yeah. Let me know when that happens, because I will definitely Thank you. want to uh, to tune in and share that. All right, cool. Yeah, I just said tune in. Don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah, tune in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I pictured my dad. Anyway, um, so people can find me uh, on the interwebs um, on empoweredlaw.com. You can pick up my book on amazon.com. And it's- Oh, wait, let's talk about that. Let's okay. talk about this book on Amazon, because first of all, you guys should definitely get it and leave a review. Uh, I left a review because I'm a good friend. And, um, and other go to people- and click the yeah. link to Amazon first and then buy it through that link. That was yes. going to be that was going to be my thing. And also we're giving away one of these books. So if people look at our social media for Queen Tatiana or Crypto Media, Hub, we're going to be tweeting about it. And if you retweet it, we're going to have like a, a drawing and then the winner is going to get an ebook, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, not as cool as this thing, which I need signed next time I see you. But um, the physical to. copy is quite quite nice, actually. Nice, nice binding. And also, if you buy the paperback, you get the ebook for free. So oh. you can read it on your Kindle. And I don't know if I told you this yet. Um, it's it's not, I, guess, I don't think I've even mentioned it publicly yet. But um, the fabulous and velvety voiced uh, oh. Stephanie Murphy, Dr. Stephanie yes. Murphy. Oh. Yeah, that's right. She has finished the audiobook version. 
So Fantastic. it is going to be I out I know soon. that. Uh, I wouldn't well, have even keeping it under wraps. Oh my gosh, that's it's so not exciting. ready yet. So okay, yeah, I mean, it is ready, but it isn't like officially approved through um, the the audiobook Audible folks. So, but that should be available hopefully this week, this week or next week. So I am so excited. Uh, I mean, that's if, you, if, if Stephanie's voice can't make you do estate planning, I don't know what can. Exactly. Um, Stephanie's voice turning a tragedy into something fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be seeing her next week. So I wanted to just say something, you know, this book can also be a really good Father's Day present. Um, and what you can do is you can get the book online using the Amazon free Ross code. So a little portion goes to Ross, then most of the portion goes to Pam, and then you can give the, the physical gift to your family and then read the ebook yourself. It's a gift that you're giving to yourself while giving it to your family and coming up like how do you person. drop that though how do you how do you give that to your dad without looking like a total fucking like how do you more, pamela you must have a tip for that how do you give a family Listen, dads care about their offspring that's why they're getting presents in the first place that's true so that's you could also you could also frame it as hey i want to learn about this crypto asset thing and part of this book, which I didn't mention yet, but part of this book requires you or encourages you to do a security audit, to kind of go through your stuff and say, hey, how am I holding things? Like, have I used that hardware wallet that I bought? Is all my stuff on there? And so it kind of helps you consolidate as well. And that's part of the process. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it's, I, I don't know about giving it for Father's Day. I mean, maybe depending on, you know, gift. your relationship. It could also be if you've got a passive aggressive family, you could yeah. be like, <laughs> no, that's probably completely inappropriate. Um, but, you know, it, it is a tool that people are using um, for relationships as well. So, for example, um, if you've got a significant other like a spouse, and you absolutely trust them and you want to share all of your stuff with them, which as a lawyer, I'll just say, be careful. Um, but if, if that's your situation and that's what you want to do, um, a lot of people have been having their spouse go through the plan with them and actually mm. have their spouse write the letter for them. Oh. And so that way they know, like they're guaranteed that they know how to access everything and questions come up and they're kind of creating this little project together. So, um, you it's know, so romantic. that's another way that you can use it. I know, right? That's how you can bond. You could be like, oh baby, I can't wait until you go. That's really when I'm going to get used to bad boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'll say whatever it takes. Okay. Whatever it no, takes. No, I'm into this. I'm going to do this torture. It's not that torturous guys. I'm not, you, People know that I'm like a big complainer and I don't like to do certain things. And and so far, so good. I actually think it's it's really, really well done. I'm not yeah, that I'm, surprised considering, but it's it's not that terrifying. And then there's like a little note in the back. You can copy the loved one and you've got a checklist. I like I, I like this book. I'm okay with this. Book. Point. I, I'm gonna order it as soon as I get off this call because I, I think it's it's really yeah, I've been thinking about it for a while, how to do this and yeah, could definitely use. I mean, we, you know, at Voltoro, we have to think a lot about security anyway. Right. Uh, and I'm sure I was going to ask you about that, you know, about general, uh, but we've run out of time, general. Um, and yeah, we'll where's have, your have, best have practices? Where where can we have, like, Pam, you, you have really good um, security stuff. And so we're promoting the book, but I want to, like, refer people back to any kind of work that you've done trying to explain some Bitcoin security. She's got some great videos online. I know that. I don't know what your YouTube is, but maybe you could tell people where they could check out some of that stuff. Sure. I'm really bad at marketing. I'll just put that out there. Um, so there are there are some videos online on Third Key Solutions. Um, you can also find them on the Empowered Law website. Um, I, I did a talk at Bitcoin Wednesday a couple of years ago, the, the meetup in Amsterdam. On Amsterdam. Yeah. yeah, where I demonstrated how to use a Trezor and how to use a passphrase on a Trezor. And we played this great game where I asked anyone in the audience if they could guess my passphrase, they could get all the Bitcoin. And so we played this game in real time um, so that I could illustrate how passphrases work and all of that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in those kind of advanced security features, um, you should definitely take a look at that video. 
Um, I'm in the process of of putting together a, a Bitcoin security book as well. Oh, thank um, God. And then I'm also That's in the process long overdue. Of, <laughs> I know it is actually, in fact, long overdue. Um, oh. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's one of those things that um, it's, it's writing a book is way harder than I thought it would be. I'm just going to put it out mm. there for those of you who have written a book like it. You're like, oh, I can write a blog like that's no problem. And all a book is is really just a bunch of blog articles. Right. If you read books about writing. No, it is not. OK, no, do not be no. fooled, friends. Um, yeah. and so especially with such a moving target like crypto, it's, it's yeah. always evolving and there's new technologies and wow. yeah. Absolutely. So, um, so yeah, that's in the works. I'm also working on a book for lawyers, specifically for lawyers, what they need to do. Um, I'm also flirting with the idea of doing um, in-person crypto asset inheritance planning workshops, like for owners, where wow. you come and we actually sit down together in a room. Um, and of course, like that would have to be super awkward and have cubicle walls because you need your <laughs> privacy. Um, but, you know, actually like getting people to do it because the, the the issue is you buy the book you read the book and you want to do it and then for whatever reason you don't actually do it and so getting people to that final mile like getting people through the process is something that i i want to work on so um you know in person and then also webinar stuff so i've got a lot of a lot of stuff going on but mostly Man, you know so cool it's pam education is, pam is the best. This is why she's the best, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't even say yeah. that in like a fake ass way. I mean it. Pam is one of my favorite people. I'm so excited for all your amazing work. I can't wait Thank for the you. security book. I'm going to do this in your honor. And also, I did read the back page where you say the thank yous. And the book yeah. is dedicated to me, the person reading this book. If you're reading this section, you're both persistent and meticulous or impatient. And you just went to the last page. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please make sure <laughs> well done. Up. Crypto has an inheritance planning. <laughs> uh, Pamela Morgan, uh, one more time. What's your website? Pamela WJD. No, uh, Empowered you can Law. Find, oh, you can find it on either one, but empoweredlaw.com works. Uh, Pamela JD works. Um, find me on Twitter. Send me a message. I almost never use LinkedIn, so don't find me there. Uh, All right. But yeah. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> or find you at a local event. Pam's always doing awesome events, so please make sure you go and see her live. And if you guys are a legal organization and you want to maybe hook up with Pam, uh, shoot her a message, shoot us. We'd be happy to put you in touch. And if you want to win one of these books, you got to look at our social media. Go to Queen Tatiana or Crypto Media Hub. Baltoro is going to be tweeting some stuff. Pam's going to be on there. So get your book today, ladies and gentlemen. Don't yeah. delay because you know what? You never know when it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You never know when the fat lady sings. So, um, also, folks, talking about finding people, you can find the show on iTunes. It's been uh, on there for a while, but uh, we'd love uh, for people to leave us some reviews on iTunes to help other people find the show. It would really, really help us out. Um, just go on there and leave us a little uh, review. That would be great. Just search for the Tatiana show and you'll find it. And it doesn't I, the really take that long to leave a review either. You know, like no, it's especially just, it's like not on seconds, Amazon. And it actually, it really helps. It actually really does help people. Oh, really? Okay. You don't yeah. have a podcast though, do you? No, but Maybe a book. you need one. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, fine. Now I understand everything. Okay, guys, <laughs> well, the world has been illuminated. I'll see you all soon. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.